Hi, my name is Dr. Fenolio, and I'm here today to talk about why I wrote Life in the Dark. Biodiversity is something that we're losing quickly here on planet Earth, and this book is about biodiversity. The book's not about me, it's not about accolades, it's not about awards. This book is about biodiversity, and I hope that it gets you thinking about biodiversity. Now, biodiversity, or all the life on the planet, is important to me just for the, the pure sake of being here and, and being present. I would like to uh, keep biodiversity on our planet just because I think it should be here, but I'm fully cognizant of the fact that a lot of people need a pragmatic argument. And so I have one here for you today. I don't like boiling biodiversity and the value of biodiversity down to what humans can get out of it, but I'm fully aware that there are plenty of people that need to see something, some value in biodiversity to want to save it. So I'm going to use amphibians as an example. Amphibians were the group that made the transition evolutionarily from the water to the land. And the reason they were able to do that is because they can breathe through their skin. They didn't need to use gills like fish do. But to breathe through their skin, they had to keep it moist. And moist skin is a great place for things like bacteria and fungi to develop. So the evolutionary response in amphibians was the evolution of the granular gland. These glands are microscopic, they look like little embedded grapes in the skin, and they contract all day long, and they secrete uh, toxins onto the skin of amphibians, and these toxins keep microbes at bay. Now, how does that tie into to, to humans and, and, and of value? So, it turns out that amphibian skin secretions are incredibly good at killing bacteria, which is exactly why they evolved. And, and here's where it intersects with the dilemma that humanity has. Humanity is losing its battle with antibiotic-resistant bacteria. And these are bacteria that have become resistant to our best medications to kill them. For example, about 15% of the strains of Staphylococcus, or the bacteria that causes the staph infection, are now resistant to vancomycin, our last really good antibiotic, to kill that. Well, tying that back into amphibian skin secretions, those skin secretions, many of them kill even the most resistant of antibiotic resistant bacteria. So the, the, my point here is just using one small subgroup of biodiversity, the amphibians, they are serving as this platform, this resource of incredible chemical diversity. Consider this, there are over 7,000 living species of amphibian on Earth. Think of all the unique chemical compounds that are there that we haven't even begun to explore. So this is really the foundation from which new human medications can come to kill these very, very challenging bacterial infections that we're facing. Now what I want you to do is take amphibians and set them aside and you can insert any subgroup of biodiversity. Chances are their story is just the same as amphibians. They're in trouble, they're declining, they're losing their habitat, they're, they're dealing with environmental contaminants. Something is really drawing down the biodiversity there. 